<laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let me share my slides with you. Uh, wonderful. Can you all see that? I see some nods. It's nice to see people. Uh, you know, uh, I've done quite a few conferences uh, and you're talking to a void. You don't really know who's about. Um, it's nice to, to see at least some heads and it's nice to see so many familiar names as well. Uh, particularly wonderful to see so many former students now presenting at these conferences. Uh, that gives me a great joy. And uh, it's nice for me to be here. Um, I'm, uh, I, I care about coaching a great deal. I talk about coaching a lot. Uh, I used to run the coaching psychology masters at UEL uh, until 2018. And uh, um, I've uh, taught the foundational coaching module on all the coaching related, um, uh, um, coaching, related um, coaching masters. So um, I, I really like uh, uh, talking about this stuff right now. And today particularly is something very close to my heart because um, Nobody really understands what uh, positive psychology coaching is. When you ask people uh, what they do and they say, I'm a coach, you don't really know what that means. Uh, if people say, I'm a positive psychology coach, you have a bit of a closer idea about it, but you still don't really understand uh, what that person particularly means just because there's such a huge range of what this, uh, of what this can mean, um, both in positive psychology and coaching. Uh, you might say uh, that you're a coach informed by positive psychology, but really uh, at present, there is no single agreed definition of positive psychology coaching and uh, even the terminology varies. And this was from a very recent paper uh, by my colleague uh, Christian and uh, lots of other uh, formidable colleagues. And I hope I got uh, all the pictures right. Uh, I think it's lovely that so many, uh, so much research is coming out of the MEPCP uh, program. Uh, and it's very important because we really need to understand it more. Um, many coaches are informed by positive psychology. Uh, in fact, uh, positive psychology and coaching are natural allies. I won't go through all of these quotes. Uh, I brought a lot of slides, by the way, and uh, many of them are probably uh, moved through quite quickly. Uh, it's really not about that. What I'm, what I'm trying to uh, give to you is a, a state of play of where coaching uh, and positive psychology are so that we can hopefully um, uh, introduce some pathways of how we could come to more of an understanding uh, of uh, what positive psychology coaching means and how we could put a frame around it. So we've long known that uh, positive psychology and coaching are natural allies, that they have the same aim, that uh, positive psychology is the science at the heart of a lot of coaching and uh, that they really make a lot of sense together. They, uh, they, they're both uh, naturally formed together. We've talked about a marriage. Uh, at some point I talked about how we're not quite married yet, but it's more we're dating and it's amazing and we're, we're merging and we're in this process of coming together. Uh, that was now a good couple of years ago uh, that, that we started speaking about that. Um, so let me talk you through a little bit of the, of the history of um, uh, how, what, where we are with conceptualizations. Um, maybe first and foremost, um, positive psychology coaching uh, uh, is really grounded in science. And um, that sets it apart from the kind of suicide and uh, anecdotal evidence that so often coaching is criticized for. Uh, positive psychologists believe that uh, a grounding in science is very important. Um, it gives us better generalization of the results, better understanding of the mechanisms, um, better confidence in the, in the findings. It's about replication. And um, it, 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 we, we are producing insights through an empirical method. But we really, really need more data if we want to be, uh, have positive psychology coaching be grounded in science. We need more science um, because it's not clear. We kind of need something like this. This is a very recent book by my colleague, Eric Dehan, uh, who uh, brought all of the uh, data from, um, from executive coaching together and uh, published it in a recent book. And while there are some uh, meta-analysis and now a good amount of studies of what works in executive coaching, we do not have that for positive psychology coaching. There's still a very broad range. And the issue is that in order to measure the outcome of positive psychology coaching, we do need to define the approach and what it means to uh, practice positive psychology coaching. So 
Here's uh, from a recent article from uh, from uh, Evelyn Van Zyl. Uh, the lack of both a clearly articulated definition and a process-oriented positive psychology coaching methodology or framework or model uh, leads some to believe that such uh, is a product of pseudoscience or that it is another victim of the of the jangle fallacy. So that, um, you know, we have uh, an old concept uh, like coaching in a, in a new jacket. We just put it into, into positive psychology. So that's, that's what we're trying to do because we are so grounded in this belief that it's important to, to, uh, to root what we do uh, in the data that we produce. So where are we with positive psychology coaching? Um, well, if you type it into Google, um, you get zero results from uh, positive psychology coaching and definition. You get two results from a positive psychology coaching definition. There's a few more on uh, Google Scholar, but I think it's significant. Uh, one of these results, which I actually uh, quite like, is from a website called Definition Diverse. I couldn't find out who's actually behind this website, um, but uh, this person captured a few really good points that it's about the scientific study and application of behavior, cognition, and uh, emotion. They talked about uh, that the goal of, um, of positive psychology coaching is about performance, like most or many, much of coaching, achievement, but particularly well-being. Uh, they talk about application areas. Uh, they talk about values, strengths, challenges, resilience, a lot of uh, the study areas that we know from positive psychology. And particularly, again, underlining that it's underpinned by extensive professional research, uh, which we have about many of the uh, areas that we utilize, such as resilience or strengths. There's quite a lot of research. But we don't have a lot of research about the application of strength in a particular way in coaching. So, and also, um, there aren't any references here. There isn't an academic argument around it. Uh, I know that this is evidence-based, um, but what we want to, to have uh, in order to be true to the positive psychology mindset uh, is much more uh, academic literature on this. Um, while there are a lot of papers and uh, studies out there, or at least a growing amount, I wouldn't call it a lot necessarily, uh, these are literally the publications. There's a recent one in German that came out, and uh, if I have missed anything, uh, please please let us know in the chat. Um, but uh, most of these books, uh, uh, with the exception perhaps of Positive Psychology in Practice, which came out most recently, um, uh, these are all books that uh, were more from a practitioner's perspective. This is how coaching can look like, or these are the kind of uh, concepts from Positive Psychology that make sense in a coaching framework. So um, we do still need more grounding here. There's a lot of material out there that we can utilize in a coaching setting, but we are far from uh, having a unified model or uh, an agreement on what a framework could be. So uh, there's an exciting publication coming out later this year um, by Wendy and Smith, Ilona Bonneville and, and Susie Green uh, with a lot more, uh, an edited version with lots of chapters around positive psychology coaching in the workplace. Um, but again, even there, the definitions uh, are not that clear, and, uh, but it gives us a lot of um, ammunition for researchers to go and look at what works and what are some of those common factors. So how can we make sense of this? Uh, well, Seligman um, in some ways started us off and talked about um, uh, positive psychology and coaching, uh, but uh, mainly said uh, that uh, positive psychology provides coaches with a uh, dim limited scope of practice, with interventions, with measurements, with assessments, uh, ways to evaluate um, and adequate qualifications to be a coach. So it was a, a starting point, but there wasn't really a lot in there that we could use to actually make sense of how that might look like in practice. Um, Kaufman came along, Carol, and uh, said that the heart of positive psychology, uh, just like coaching, lies the practitioner's choice to shift attention away from the pathology and pain and direct it towards a clear-eyed concentration on strength, vision, and dream. So very much solution-focused in the mindset of positive psychology. It's about resources and strength. Um, so that's a, that's a good starting point. Uh, the first book publication that you saw earlier by Robert Biswastina and Ben Dean um, uh, highlighted that uh, um, the important aspects of positive psychology, uh, psychology coaching, which is about harnessing positivity and strength mainly, 
And the other signature trait, they say, is the prevalence for evidence-based approaches and a systematic method for gorging success. So again, in line with this uh, main um, mindset of grounding it in evidence, but then there's positivity and there's strength. And these are themes that come up again and again. Um, Grant uh, summarized this as the systematic application, systematic application of behavioral science of positive psychology in the service of enhancing clients' life experiences, work performance, and well-being. So that already gives us a little bit more focus, but it's still relatively vague. So um, evidence-based behavioral science um, incorporation of an informed practitioner model that distinguishes the coaching approach in this book from the all too frequent pop psychology and pseudosciences. So again, this highlighting of, uh, of evidence and the evidence base. Then uh, in his book, um, uh, Positive Psychology, um, uh, Practicing Positive Psychology Coaching, um, uh, Robert outlines five tenets, the mindset of a positive psychology coach and says, rather than a complex functional model of its inner working, it's about this uh, attitude uh, towards human beings as having an innate drive to grow, as focusing on strength, uh, the positivity that was mentioned, um, and attention to both positive and negative. It's not just resources and strength. Uh, and it's the uh, scientifically, once more, the scientifically derived knowledge that we want. So really we had four areas there, uh, positive interventions, which he now has changed his mind on, but uh, I'll, I'll say a few words about that later. Strength, positive emotions, and assessment as a means to evaluate uh, outcome and success. Here's another one uh, by Kara Kaufman and uh, uh, some of our other colleagues and other publications, a scientifically rooted approach uh, to helping clients increase well-being, enhance and apply strength, uh, improve performance and achieve valued goals. The valued goals here is new, this uh, positive uh, aspect to goal setting, but uh, you'll see um, strong patterns that emerge from this. Uh, Johnson Passmore and Lindsay Oates uh, wrote a few papers, a series of papers, and in this one, they have defined uh, positive psychology coaching as coaching approaches. So there's a range of approaches that they recognize that seek to improve short term well being and sustainable well being, such as uh, eudaimonic well being, using, again, evidence based approaches from positive psychology and the science of well being. And particularly, they highlight that it needs to be sustainable even beyond the uh, completion. They talk specifically about strength, about positive emotions, the broaden and build theory, uh, self determination theory, and PERMA. So, bringing in uh, conceptualizations of well being that can help the coach uh, work. They say coaching psychology is applied positive psychology. So really, uh, uh, positive. This is where the, they said the rubber of positive psychology theory hits the road of organizational and health practice. So we apply positive psychology theory uh, to our clients, and that is what makes it positive psychology coaching. Christian and Lindsay um, wrote a few years later that a shared focus. There's a shared focus on unlocking potential, building on people's strengths. Strengths, a very strong theme. And enhancing people's well-being uh, to supporting sustainable optimal functioning. So all very much in line, you see a certain picture forming there. Um, Susie and Stephen um, uh, based their um, framework for positive psychology coaching on their raw model of flourishing, uh, raw standing for resilience, achievement, and uh, well-being. And these are underlined by psychological theory. There is a lot of research uh, in coaching psychology, in positive psychology, and in clinical psychology. And you can uh, use that uh, coaching to apply it to this model uh, to achieve these three outcomes. So that gives us a, a, a decent framework for the work as well, but still lots of space for how that might actually look like. Um, in 2020, um, uh, Levin uh, van Zyl and her colleagues um, uh, had a paper where they uh, analyzed um, as a meta analysis of uh, 24 papers um, of the literature on positive psychology coaching. And what they concluded is that positive psychological coaching, so slightly different from positive psychology coaching, uh, and as they also refer to a strength-based coaching or positive coaching. So we have a lot of different terminology in here, but that seems to be uh, used often uh, interchangeably, it has been positioned as a solution-focused, applied positive psychological approach aimed at the facilitation of goal achievement, 
well-being and positive change in various life domains and applications. So they broaden the focus a little bit more even. Uh, they go on to say uh, to define positive psychological coaching uh, as a short to medium term professional collaborative relationship between a client and a coach aimed at the identification, utilization, optimization and development of personal strengths and resources in order to enhance positive states, traits and behaviors. So they're getting more specific here uh, based on their review of the literature. Uh, they mention Socratic goal setting. They mention positive psychological evidence-based approaches to facilitate personal growth, optimal functioning, enhanced well-being, and the utilization of people's potential. So here are a few insights in what specifically can be done and how that might look like in practice. Yet when you do look at the data, and this is a part of the data that we present in their paper, uh, they talk about the common factors here. And yet uh, you can see uh, 94 mentions uh, of elements or factors uh, in those 24 papers. And while strengths are being mentioned quite a lot, the numbers are going down significantly, whereas at the bottom, there's only five. And this is not even the bottom. There's a lot more. So you really don't see a lot of very common factors. And when you look at that table as well, um, a, a lot of these factors, they're not really specific to positive psychology. Uh, a lot of that you would find in other approaches to coaching. So uh, they do name eight critical components of positive psychology coaching. Um, strengths have been mentioned 100% of the papers, but uh, the bottom four only been mentioned by a maximum of half. And then again, if you look at all of these uh, critical components of positive psychology coaching, only read that the strength one is particularly about positive psychology. And uh, strengths are being used by um, probably a majority of coaches in some way or another. So how characteristic is that really? And it leaves questions open about uh, positive psychology uh, coaching and, and what you do with that. So then uh, Robert uh, updated his thinking. Uh, he's been really a pioneer in the positive psychology coaching sector. Uh, over the years, he's updated and moved away from using, um, from using interventions, for example, uh, in personal communication with uh, Susie Green and Stephen Palmer, um, published in the book that I mentioned. He said, uh, positive psychology coaching is not an endeavor distinct from coaching itself. Rather, it includes coaching as usual. If you were to see someone do it, you would see all the usual suspects, agenda setting, powerful questions, and accountability, everything that a coach does, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. But overlaid on this foundation of good coaching would be a series of interventions that are grounded in positive psychology science, harnessing positive emotions, developing strength, increasing hope. And while these topics might seem uh, what all good coaches do anyway, which a lot of coaches would argue, this is not positive psychology coaching, I do that, um, a positive psychology coach is explicitly guided by the dynamic research insights. So again, this focus on uh, research and evidence-based data. He highlights uh, in his most recent paper on this, um, the non-prescriptiveness that is important. Uh, at its heart, positive psychology coaching is coaching. So there isn't, at its heart, at its core, there isn't a difference between positive psychology coaching and coaching, which is very interesting. Um, it is about the actual intervention coaching as the intervention rather than specific interventions from psychology that make the difference here. It's very important that the coach is science literate, that the coach is able to, uh, to digest and process research and um, have that influence the way that they coach, have that inform their line of questioning. You know, it's about uh, uh, having good ethical foundations. It's the last point that he's mentioned. And again, that's something that I think you can apply to all coaches or all evidence-based coaches, not necessarily positive psychology coaches. So I'm still having some issues around, well, what makes this positive psychology coaching rather than other types of coaching, for example, solution-focused or... Um, Christian and, uh, and Robert, who've uh, done quite a bit recently uh, on um, uh, helping to develop the approach, uh, defined it as a managed conversational process that supports people to achieve meaningful goals uh, in a way that enhances their well-being. So what's in there is that positive psychology coaching is specifically about enhancing well-being. And so I have some questions around that. If it's not focused on well-being, is it still positive psychology coaching? Can we use uh, hope theory in order to help somebody uh, advance in their career 
or would that disqualify it from positive psychology coaching? Um, there's a set of theories that can inform our practice. And I think that's really helpful as a potential framework to look at. So there's a few practice models and I'll, I'll probably go through them quite quickly, even though there's a lot of information. I do make these slides available. So there's a download link at the end of the slides, which I'm uh, happy to share with you. Um, practice models, uh, appreciative inquiry is quite an established approach. Uh, here's a four stage model of how can that be done. Um, many coaches will use that. Many non-coaches are using appreciative inquiry. It's really focused on uh, helping to tease out uh, the resources and what's going well. So really uh, helpful as an approach, but there's more to positive psychology coaching than this. Strength are mentioned uh, throughout. So there's a few strength-based coaching models. Here's a four-phase uh, model uh, by DICE. And colleagues, uh, here's one by Fanzil, which I mentioned a few times. Um, they talk about strength-based coaching as a short to medium strength focused developmental process. And I want to read the rest of you. They have a 10-phase um, a model for this strength-based approach uh, and a really nice uh, diagram for it. There's a process. Uh, if, uh, constant evaluation is around that. And there's a 10-step process in which you can guide a client through a strengths-based process, which arguably you can call positive psychology coaching. I would think there's more to that than just using strength. Obviously, there's a lot more to that here, uh, but it doesn't, for me, quite capture the range of positive psychology coaching. There's a few different approaches that focus specifically around PERMA and have the PERMA model of uh, flourishing guide uh, the coaching in terms of the, um, the goal setting and in terms of the questions and uh, potential interventions that are available uh, to produce change in each of these pillars of well being, uh, which is a very good model to enhance well being based on this conceptualization and can really help a guide, a coach uh, guide their practice. Burr came up with six elements that uh, necessarily need to be there. Um, and the knowledge bit is an interesting one. Uh, I heard Susie Green mention at some point that the, uh, the coach uh, facilitating positive psychology or informed by positive psychology must have an obligation to share some of our knowledge from research and put that on the table, not uh, as dogma, but as something for our clients to help them inform them, something to consider. So that's an interesting one for coaches who, uh, who practice very facilitatively. We don't really want to uh, be too directive, or many coaches don't want to be too directive. Um, some are very happy to be quite directive. If we are informed by the knowledge of science, uh, do we have more of a grounding to share some of that knowledge? And I think that's a really interesting potential distinction for positive psychology coaches compared to perhaps other coaches who work uh, more purely facilitatively. Um, here's a very early kind of uh, six session format from the positive psychology uh, to, uh, coaching toolkit, um, now positivepsychology.com. Um, you could have a very structured process to what you do with a client almost as a playbook for a six session uh, positive psychology coaching model. The Whole Being Institute developed their own uh, change model uh, around clarifying, creating hope, then activating, navigating, uh, really creating action and really going for it, and then expanding. And uh, you can read up more about that model uh, on their website, so I won't go much into it. But uh, there are uh, processes out there that, uh, to my knowledge, don't have any or a lot of data to them. Um, uh, and I say a bit more about the, the issues in research uh, later, but there are some processes out there. Uh, here's another one that I uh, found by uh, Wenling Wang, who uh, published this in her dissertation uh, about how a single session of positive psychology coaching could look like utilizing uh, tools from CBC and from ACT, from hope theory, informed by self-determination theory. And uh, so there's processes out there. Uh, Ilona told me she's got a process as well that she's been training for years. Uh, I trust uh, her to be uh, very thorough and very uh, research informed. But again, I, uh, I can't see the model and uh, I'm not sure if research on that exists. So uh, a lot of coaches develop their own models to practice, but it seems that they are the only ones who can really practice it. Because if you give 10 people the same 10 questions and instructions on how to ask them, they're going to come out in 10 different ways depending on the person, how they speak, how they are, and the particular relationship with their client. 
So some of the open questions at this point are then, what are the necessary characteristics of positive psychology coaching? Uh, methods, processes, what's the outcome? Is it well-being? It doesn't have to be well-being. What's the toolbox of a positive psychology coach? What's the mindset of a positive psychology coach? What's the underlying theory? And some of the themes are very strong here across different definitions and conceptualizations. Uh, and some, there's still a range, or we just don't really know in detail what that means. Um, there's the question of, does it necessarily have to focus on well-being? What works? How do we gather more data on what the actual outcome of this is? And is there actually a difference between coaching and positive psychology coaching? Because if there isn't much of a difference, and at the heart, it's really that, and then, well, there is the focus on data and perhaps the outcome uh, on well-being, um, it brings us another challenge. What is coaching? Um, I would uh, I would love to see uh, if you have a definition of coaching that you use, a sentence or two. Um, if you have a way to explain, I would love for you to share it in the chat in the chat and see how many different definitions of coaching we can come up with. If you have one for positive psychology coaching, definitely put that in the chat. I would absolutely love to see it and include it in future presentations. Uh, if I've missed any, uh, please do let us know as well. Um, this is part of a collaboration, and I'll say a few uh, more bits about that uh, later on. But uh, it is a challenge. What is coaching? If you ask people uh, you know, what coaching is, you get so many different answers. And here's just a few models. You could make sense of it as a, a straight journey from A to B. Uh, often there's a barrier in between, so we try to go around, or we try to maybe go underneath or above, or we try to uh, get rid of what the obstacle is. Um, so that we can get to our desired outcome. That's a very basic uh, way to make sense of the coaching journey or of any change journey, really. Sometimes the obstacle is too big, so we can't really remove it or go around. Um, we often spend considerable time talking about what is the goal? What do you want? And maybe what do you really want? What is the underlying goal or the overarching goal here? And maybe there's another one that allows us to build another straight line. So that's a very simple way to make sense of the coaching process. And sometimes it's really that simple. Here's the GROW model, which I'm sure uh, all or most of you are familiar with, but uh, um, definitely the, the coaches. Um, we look at where do you want to be? Where are you now? What's your current reality? How can we bridge that gap? And how exactly are you going to do that? So that's a useful uh, way to make sense of coaching. And you could uh, uh, help somebody go through a model like this with a positive psychology mindset, where the goal has to do with well-being. And in the option stage, you're utilizing uh, hope theory, or you're utilizing interventions, you're utilizing evidence-based knowledge from positive psychology. So we might be able to use that. Um, Parents' intervention styles have been around since the 70s. Uh, they're used in almost all helping professions, and they paint a good uh, map for the playing field that we have as coaches, uh, from authoritative to facilitative practices. There are many coaches out there who provide information or who might even be authoritative around it. Eric Dehan, uh, I mentioned him before, um, put that into his playing field around suggesting exploring and confronting supporting. I think a good coach will be able to move all over this playing field. However, uh, an excellent coach might also frame their space in the coaching universe on the top right uh, quadrant or on the bottom left. I know my modus operandi is more on the confronting or challenging and exploring side. But I know if the context demands it, I, I can be very supportive and I can put suggestions on the table if I, uh, if I and the client feel that's most needed and appropriate. So that's helpful to make sense of uh, the range of what coaching can be and how we might conceptualize it. So that's helpful. Here's uh, the model by Christian, three factors, coaching process, coaching skills, and way of being. And I really like the simplicity of that. Uh, and in a moment, you can see why. Um, here's a slightly more complex model by Jonathan Pasmo, which is an integrated model of coaching. And uh, those of you familiar with humanistic uh, psychology and maybe a bit of Carl Rogers, uh, it's embedded in, um, in the core conditions for, uh, for therapy, which are also core conditions for person-centered coaching. We want to create that um, relationship 
in which somebody feels safe and they can be challenged and they can think. And in the inner circle, you have a more uh, cognitive behavioral model. Uh, if you are familiar with Jonathan's model, there's a lot more that uh, that comes into this model, um, which he draws on, uh, which we could compare to, for example, the positive psychological theory here. And there's particular outcomes that he outlines uh, in the context of work performance. We can make sense of the role of the coaching. And if you look at that, even if you just give it a very quick look, hopefully there's a lot of questions you would have around that. Uh, and regardless of whether this is accurate or not, or what you think about that, in reality, coaching looks a lot more like this. When you speak to practitioners, it seems that uh, depending on who you ask and depending on how they define their work, uh, there's a lot of uh, space to go wherever the coach wants to go and whatever the client needs at the time. Um, usually only guided by how far the coach is willing and able to go. So it's such a broad umbrella term, this coaching, and uh, attempts to define it uh, are, are um, I like the freedom that there is such a big range. But if we wanted to research it and call it coaching, it's really difficult to have so many different uh, definitions of it. Uh, while some factors are common or more common than others, uh, it's unregulated and maintains unregulated. And uh, for many years, uh, people have been saying that more regulation will come. Some more regulation has come, but in order to research it, we need to be really quite clear on what we mean when we say that and how that would look like. How could somebody possibly replicate a study about positive psychology coaching uh, when a lot of coaching is in the relationship and how interventions are being delivered? You know, what are we actually measuring? Are we actually measuring the questions or the process and uh, without being able to really look at what is being done here? So here's a very uh, crude attempt to bring some of these elements and factors together. Uh, you have the kind of coaching cluster, um, what the skills and processes that uh, are used in any kind of coaching. You have the kind of evidence-based coaching cluster. Around that, you might have uh, uh, bits like solution-focused, where there's a lot of evidence strength. There's a huge cluster there. Uh, the kind of positive thinking that can come through the more constructive thinking from cognitive behavioral practice, appreciative inquiry, um, assessment, evaluation, positive psychology interventions. All of these things we can bring into such a model potentially. Um, we have this kind of mindset of positive psychology, the, the basic tenets that Robert described, um, the systematic method, uh, applied knowledge from science, implied empirical data, a kind of positivity, uh, various different areas from positive psychological theory that we might utilize, um, the kind of uh, uh, mindfulness uh, act, uh, evidence-based knowledge, all the research from positive leadership, organizational scholarship. And uh, we have different approaches to coaching that could be tied to positive psychological coaching. So here's uh, Christian's model again. And what I've done is just taken some of these uh, main themes and just placed them around. There's uh, coaching processes, there's coaching skills, and there's this positive psychological way of being a coach. So this is how you could potentially start making sense of this or start grouping them around a model. Um, again, very early stages, but, but just to kind of throw some ideas out there. Um, similarly, to revisit Pasmo's model, maybe there could be an integrated model of positive psychology coaching. What would the outcomes be? What would be in the center of this? What would the process be for positive psychology coaching? And uh, if we create that, we get closer to being able to research it. But as I already mentioned, uh, there are quite a lot of uh, issues in research. It's difficult to really pinpoint what is being measured. Is it the relationship? Is it the, uh, the set of questions? Is it the underlying theory? Is it the intervention? Um, so what do, we, what do we do with that? We can get closer to it the more data we have, but it's going to be a long process. Research works uh, not necessarily fast. And uh, it's uh, particularly difficult when um, so many practitioners who are also researchers, what I've seen, um, I, I've seen uh, research that is uh, creating a framework for the practitioner's approach, who was also the researcher, as a basis for their coaching practice, which is not necessarily wrong. It's just not necessarily helpful for the research process, because if somebody else would take this paper and try to, uh, try to replicate it, 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 chances are they get different results because they're a different kind of coach, even, even if they're trying to apply the same process. 
So it's not it's not meaningless because you know even if you if you try to apply the same process, there's still something there. But there's so many confounding variables that it's really difficult to get good data. Um, but we need to be committed to that process if we want to maintain that positive psychology mindset that is mentioned everywhere of being rooted in empirical evidence. You know, it's not enough, I think, to uh, to bring the theories in, but apply the theories in a multitude of ways to a point where it's difficult to actually grasp what is being done and how do we measure the outcome. And then there's lots of issues around terminology. Um, what are we using? Is this coaching? Is it positive psychology coaching? Is it positive coaching? Positive psychological coaching, strength-based coaching, appreciative inquiry. There's so many potential different terms that mean the same thing. So for positive psychology coaching to distinguish, I think this paragraph is really good, for positive psychology coaching to distinguish itself from other approaches to coaching uh, or from coaching itself, uh, depending on the argument that you're taking, uh, and to develop its own identity within science, there needs to be an objective, systematically developed and organized body of knowledge supporting such. This knowledge should be available. Uh, this knowledge should be available to other researchers to utilize, implement, validate, evaluate, critique, and update it in an objective and systematic manner. It's so important that we take and adopt. That we are living this uh, grounding in uh, science. Um, the basis of such body of knowledge starts with widely accepted and um, standardized definition of the concept, and we don't have that. So we're getting somewhat closer with the work that we're doing, lots of research studies coming out, but I would really um, would like researchers and practitioners to collaborate more. If you're a researcher and a practitioner, collaborate with other practitioners to maybe apply your practice, really talk a lot more uh, with other research and other practitioners um, about what you're doing here and what you're researching and how you're researching that. Try to uh, get a group of coaches who are already uh, quite similar to each other in their way of being or in their normal coaching practice, in their coaching skills. If we're trying to create homogeneity in the practitioners, and then we give them all the same process model to follow, then we get much closer to uh, good data. You know, So we need to apply the stringent research process that we do with everything else also here. Uh, Robert, uh, uh, quite early, 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, um, um, encouraged positive psychologists and coaching psychologists to do the same, to talk more, to relate more, to work together um, so that we can make sense of coaching and positive psychology together. I think the same applies for positive psychology coaches and positive psychology researchers as well. Might we need independent researchers who, are, who might not have invested interest in this study or in this coaching framework that we're researching to deliver good results. You know, one study is not enough. One study might be enough to tell your clients that this stuff is really strong and it's gonna get you the outcomes you want, but it's not good enough for science. So some open questions here uh, to add. Um, well, uh, one I wanted to add that came to me this morning that really should have been in there is, uh, do we actually want a unified theory of positive psychology coaching? I mean, it's necessary for us to research it, but isn't part of the beauty of coaching that there is a broad range and there's so much freedom for the coach to uh, use and uh, utilize whatever is necessary and relevant in the context in which the coaching takes place? You know, is it actually helpful for the client to figure out what we actually mean by that? Um, we need more research evidence. Um, we need to figure out what the difference between positive psychology coaching and coaching is, really, if there, if there is one. Does it need to focus on well-being? And do we need independent researchers? I, I think there is a conflict of interest uh, for a lot of research that is not really talked about. And I've heard through the grapevine from some research studies that, well, this is really there to um, solidify uh, their coaching approach um, for clients so that they get more work, which is fair because it does create trust but one study isn't enough. And I think if we're committed to science, we should fully commit to science and also fully commit to our clients. So now go and collaborate. Uh, unfortunately, I can't be around for the networking session now. I have a really busy day going on, but uh, please, please, please uh, reach out. Um, uh, I'll, I'll share my contact details in a moment, 
uh, we do need to have those conversations. Please do use the networking spaces to collaborate. Find coaches who are like you, maybe the, uh, uh, team up on a piece of research. If you're currently doing your MEPCT, uh, MEPCP or any other coaching or positive psychology research, uh, maybe there's scope to really broaden the knowledge base on this. And uh, that's that would be my invitation to you because we are in a wonderful position where we are pioneering this approach. It's still very much emerging. And that's wonderful because uh, it is uh, the future, I believe, of this. And uh, to end on a positive note, your clients often really couldn't care less about what you call it or what it's grounded in. What your clients care about is whether you can help them. And they love positive psychology and it's formidable. Um, but really the how and the what is not so important to them. What you call it, yeah, is there's a unified theory Meh, because they're working with one person. They're not necessarily so interested in the science of this, but I care about it. And I reckon you care about it too. And uh, it does benefit the science um, or does it? Um, and that's what I want to leave you with. Um, do uh, You can uh, download the slides. Uh, there's the last link there, bit.ly slash PPC slides. 2021 uh, is where you can get those. Uh, please feel free to stay in touch. Um, I write a monthly thing that you can follow me. And if you want to see positive psychology coaching in action, uh, I run coaching labs once a month. And uh, I regularly invite some of these people you might know, uh, uh, practitioners who are either informed by positive psychology or who practice positive psychology in the coaching room. And I think seeing it in practice is so important because that's where the research can start. And this is where we can uh, get inspired to then take that back to the researchers and figure out how that works. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate you being here and having those conversations. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for that. It was really, really interesting. And, and certainly, yeah, I'm a coach and, and a lot of it, you know, just the concept, hearing you talk about the science behind it, you can link to what we're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and, and probably at each moment, there's an example. Yes, that, that I can see that, I can see that. So thank you so much. And it, it gives us much more of a, a wider base to go and research and look at. So thank you. And I yeah, I know you've got a, a busy day. So um <laughs> we'll we'll connect via different um channels and and look forward to carry on reading what and, you're up to. Maybe share the slides.